Good morning, folks. Check out plasma filaments beginning to snap around the limbs. None facing Earth, but that's why we watch them. The filament incoming on the north is a solar tornado with the rotation easily seen here. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star. Dark coronal hole dominates our view. Tiny bright active region ahead of it is departing and stifled in the sunspot department. That solar wind from the little coronal hole out ahead of this big one arrived yesterday and drove a minor telemetry intensification, but the speed of the stream couldn't crack 500 kilometers per second. It's got us up off the floor in the KP index, but still no geomagnetic concerns. You may recall that Earth should be magnetically connecting to this large coronal hole for an earthquake watch, especially with the phi angle set to return to us from the sun. But up in blue, the only deviation from riding around 360 degrees was a shift to single digit degrees, and recall 0 and 360 are right next to each other on the circle. 180 degrees is the sun to earth field setup and has not yet occurred for this coronal hole. We're starting the weather in New South Wales. Yesterday we showed the system set to drop major precipitation on the region. It came through and did just that. Up next it's China where the sandstorm began on Sunday but has slowly marched eastward to one city after the next. The wall of sand and dust engulfed a number of key sites and has frustrated officials on the roadways. We're going back to flooding, where two months of expected rainfall fell in just a few hours, leaving flash floods and standing water in the streets of two major cities of the UAE. Lastly, on the weather front, we're seeing more snow records falling in the United States. I am beginning to see the signals of vortex and jet shifting in the coming weeks. Good news for the U.S., bad news for Europe. You're probably next. Let's hit the top science news. While we've previously looked at stars whipping around the galactic center, there is yet another type of fast-moving star that requires no small-scale loop orbit. Hypervelocity stars are moving vastly more quickly than others in the perspective, which will more wobble with precession than anything else. But alas, there are the outliers and now the South African Large Telescope has gotten into the fun tracking one star racing away from a supernova remnant, possibly of its former binary. Up next earthquake science. We've been discussing the electroquake research as much as possible since one of the pre-seismic electromagnetic signals tracked by China's seismoelectromagnetic satellite is the one we're credited with discovering, part of the early mission planning objectives to study. And now the European team is getting in on that type of science too. It took only one month for that large quake in Greece to be analyzed electromagnetically. We've now got word that we're only 30-something days out from a solid electroquake track through its effects on the global electric circuit and location-based critical states. Lastly, here on the article front, we use the planets for long-term forecasting of both the sun and the earth. It's an all thumbs or fingers thing, not an all fingers or thumbs thing. And today we are adding to the dozens of existing planetary solar flare connection papers, although I can't really recall the last time we got a new one of these to share. Once a year, the observers gather in the desert. We have professors and top scientists and the topics most critical to us all getting broken down with high focus on your chances to interact directly with the experts. Come see us in February. Register at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.